Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we've got another mail day, two nice envelopes. And uh, yeah, let's crack them open. I think I'm going to start with this one. And there is some construction going on in my neighborhood. So maybe you're hearing some uh, construction work. Let's see. It's in a nice top loader. Trying to open it up here, some plastics. There we go. <laughs> oh, this is such a beauty. Uh, let's have a look. Gonna try to open the seal here. There we go. This is a card um, I just had to buy. Somebody offered it and I was like, yes, please. It's in a beautiful condition. And it is the Clockwork Beast. It's six mana for actually an 04, but when it comes into play, put seven plus one plus O counters on the beast. So it's actually a seven four for six. And that's seven offense, I mean, that's huge in old school. For six mana, that's actually a good deal. Unfortunately, like many creatures in old school, it's got a drawback. It is, of course, a Clockwork creature. So there's always something happening with those counters. So let's read that. So after beast attacks or blocks, a creature discard a counter. During the untap phase, controller may buy back lost counters for one mana per counter instead of untapping the beast. This taps beast if it wasn't tapped already. So just like, for example, the Clockwork Avian from Antiquities, if you want to put counters back on, you got to tap it. And every time it basically does something, right? Attacks or blocks, it loses a counter. Now, I really like the idea of using this with Tannis's coffin, putting it in the coffin, putting it back in place so it'll double the amount of counters. It'll have 14 counters and then actually sacking it with sort of the ages. So you can deal like 14 damage or you can just do it another time and it comes with 21 power. So I kind of like that idea. I know it's <laughs> it's it's far-fetched. It's going to take a while, but I think it's cool. And I just wanted to have a copy. I'm thinking about maybe creating... Um, a singleton deck or a highlander deck that it's just going to be dedicated to creatures with counters like clockwork beast like clockwork avian like triskelion uh, like tetravis like creatures like that there, there are quite some of them in old school magic maybe just a counter deck in general would be pretty cool anyway clockwork beast beautiful condition let's take one last look at it before we move on to the next um envelope maybe just taking it out of the sleeve really beautiful art by drew tucker that Drew Tucker really knows what he what he does. Very cool. Great work, Drew. And thank you, Eric, for sending this over to me. And here we've got a mail from Card Advantage. Let's open it up. Oh, there it is. Horn of Deafening. Four to cast from a Legends and Artifact. Two and tap, target creature deals no damage during combat this turn. And then we also have a nice flavor text, a blast, an echo, then silence. Art by Dan Frazier. Let's get this one open as well. Is there, yeah, there's an opening here. Don't need to use the knife. There we go. It opens up. It's always nice when people send this to you in good packing. There's also another card behind it. Ooh, you know what? We're gonna build the expense. I'm gonna put it here. Let's first take another look at this card again. So Horn of Deafening, card from Legends. It's actually not that bad, right? You can pay two and tap, and then target creature deals no combat damage during combat, but of course it still takes the damage. So that's actually quite nice. So, you could use this maybe in combination with a Siren's Call. That would be kind of cool. Um, and also, I mean, I understand it doesn't see a lot of play because you simply have better options, right? First of all, you can just destroy a creature like playing a Swords to Plow Steers on it. Um, another thing you can do if you don't want it to deal damage, you can use Maze of If, which is a land. So it doesn't cost anything to cast it. It doesn't cost anything to use it. But, you know, Maze of If, of course takes it out of combat. This this card does something different. This card says target creature deals no damage during combat this turn. And that's kind of where 
I find Horn of Deafening unique. Um, you could also use a force field, by the way, if you want to stop a creature, then you take one life instead of the full damage. That's also another option. So I get it why the horn doesn't see a lot of play. You just have better options in old school. But if you want to do something specific and if you want to create a scenario where you don't want the attacking creature to deal any damage, but you do want that creature to receive damage, this is actually a pretty good way to do it. And remember, you can use this defensively, but also offensively. It doesn't say if a creature has to attack or block. It doesn't specify that. So Horn of Deafening. And then I ordered one more card. And that's Voodoo Doll. And it's six. And put one counter on Voodoo Doll during your upkeep. If Voodoo Doll is not tapped at the end of your turn, it does X damage to you and is destroyed. X equals the number of counters on Voodoo Doll. So yeah, this could actually go in the kind of counter deck I was talking about, combining here with Clockwork Beast or something. Um, what I like about this card is, first of all, it's, it's really unique, isn't it? I mean, look at it. I mean, that's Legends for you. It's so unique. You made the art, Sandra. Very nice. It's, it's got something really spooky. That art is just really spooky, that voodoo doll. Anyway, uh, the cool thing is I recently saw a really cool synergy with this on the Instagram channel of Old School MTG. So if you're not a member, uh, if you're not a follower yet of that channel and you're on Instagram, I highly recommend it. It's a really cool Instagram channel. And he talked about combining Voodoo Doll with the Relic Barrier because what it says is uh, at the end of your turn, it does X damage to you and is destroyed. X equals the numbers of counters on the doll, right? But it only does that if Voodoo Doll is not tapped. Now the problem, of course, is you gotta pay double X, so two and tap. Uh, to make it deal damage to a target. At a certain point, it's gonna be harder and harder to pay that cost. So instead of tapping it this way, you can use a relic barrier to tap it down and basically deactivate it. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. So that's why I ordered one. So maybe I'm actually going to, uh, to do that, to play that, uh, that card combination, that specific combination. Anyway, um, this was the mail day of today. It's a pretty short, but I think it's some uh, really, really cool cards. They're all new in my collection, so I'm very happy to own these uh, these three. I would like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button and uh, leave a like, leave a comment. All that stuff helps. And for now, let's take a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ich kann das Fick, das Sommer gesehen.